always knew the answer to everything is raw action. The answer to everything has always been raw action. My dad had a tweet about this. He said that raw action solves all. And he used to say this. I'll give you an example. If you're a farmer and you need rain for your crop and there's no rain, you can sit there and say there's no rain. We're all going to starve. Or you can stand up and do a rain dance. Now, will your rain dance work? Perhaps not. Perhaps the rain won't come. But I would argue that you're better off standing up doing that rain dance than just sitting there waiting to die. You have to do something. Raw action solves. So when I was broke, I was never like, ah, I'm poor. I'm poor. What do I do? It was, I'm poor. What must I have to do something? I'll just, if I was broke, I'd go for a run. That's why I was such a great fighter. If I was broke, I'd sit there and go, I'm actually poor. How do I make money? Don't know. How can I make, can, where can I get some cash? Don't know. What work can I do? Don't know. Oh, I'll just go for a run then. And I'll just go for three mile run. You just have to say, well, I have to do something. I can't just sit still and die. A lot of people are happy to just sit still and die or can go to sleep and take a nap. Well, if that's what you want to do, then you can say a loser. That's fine. I'm glad there are losers because if everyone had Lamborghinis, my Lamborghini wouldn't be fun to show off. I need you to look at it and feel the deep pain in your heart of regret and failure. That's the whole point of it. I need to drive my Bugatti and everyone be looking at it going, I'll never have one of those. <laughs> and I can get all their energy and feel it all. And it makes me happy. Fantastic. So you can stay at home and do nothing. But when I was poor, I had to go for a run. I couldn't sit still or lift weights or do something. I couldn't even sleep. So raw action solves everything. I understood that as a, at a young age. But as you get older, you get to look back and you get to put your whole story together, the whole tapestry together. I knew I wouldn't stay poor. Did I ever think I'd get this rich? Well, I never said I wouldn't, but did I ever, ever think it would probably happen at this level? No, but it's amazing how the compounding interest of just endless raw action adds up. I've never had a lazy day. I've never skipped work, never missed an email, never, never had a day off ever, ever. You name the life, if you were to go through the last three years of my life, you will see that there's never been a day where I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. And it all just adds up and then monumental success comes and you get to laugh at everybody else, ha ha ha. And, and life's great. Well, I think that initially fighting is always the best thing you can ever do, especially it's the best way to spend your 20s because you heal superhumanly, you heal like Wolverine. I can't think of a better use of that superhuman healing ability besides fighting. And it's gonna teach you everything you need to know about personal accountability and hard work and overcoming fear and dedication and discipline. There's so many lessons to be found inside of fighting. And plus it's the most respected sport on the planet. And I think that you'll learn more about yourself and more about life and more about the realities of how the world works if you're a fighter. So I think that's what's so fantastic about it. All of my wisdom and all the things I say doesn't come from books. It comes from life experience. And a lot of my life experience is the brutal realities of violence. So people say, oh, Andrew's so smart. Andrew's so wise. Andrew knows so many things. I've learned all of that simply through fighting. And if you're a warrior in life, the arena may change, but the battle never ends. Yes. It's just never ending. And you have to get used to fighting. You have to get used to being under pressure and under stress all the time and being the kind of person who could perform and smile anyway. And I'm yeah. glad I spent my twenties training because I can't think of something else. I find it amazing that like I speak to people my age and I say, in my twenties, I spent maybe, I don't know, let's say three hours a day. What's a decade of three hours a day? Let's just say 10,000 hours. I spent 10,000 hours in the gym training. You're the same age as me. What did you do with those 10,000 hours? And they can't even tell me what they did. What did you do? Watch TV, go out, go pub, sit around, sleep, nap, chase women. What did you actually do? We had the same amount of waking hours and the same amount of minutes. I know where 10,000 hours of my minutes went and that's why I'm the champ. That's why I have four title belts above my bed. That's how I spent my 10,000 hours. Tell me what you did with your 10,000 hours, which is equal to, comparable to, or superior than how I spent my time. And they can't even name what they did with any of their time. They're like, don't know. So if you're 16, you need to be using every single waking minute towards things you're going to remember. You're going to remember training, you're going to remember working hard, you're going to remember trying to make money. You're doing, you're spending your life and wasting your time doing things you're not even going to be able to recollect in a few years. You're going to wonder why you fall behind the people who don't waste time. Time is the ultimate currency. Time is money. Time is also strength and power and networks connection. Time is everything. You can convert it. It's like malleable. Time is like Play-Doh. Yeah. You can turn it into anything. You can turn it into muscles if you go to the gym. Turn it into fighting prowess if you go to the fight gym. gym. But people have all this time and they just mush around with it. And then they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, I don't know why. I don't know why oh, I, I'm failing. I wish I was successful. When you're living in that type of life and you end up searching for meaning, you end up down the path of hedonism because the meaning is I want to have as much fun as possible. But fun in and of itself. I was talking to another, another girl and I was saying to her that fun. She was saying to me, you know what, Andrew? All you do is work. You never really have fun. And I said, fun is haram. He goes, is fun really haram? I'm like, no, it's not. But please understand what I'm trying to say here. What I'm trying to say is when you look at what most people do for fun, 
It's her. Look, with funnies, clubs, drinking, running around, laughing like a kid, all this, you, all, it, all the bad things in life, the negative haramities can be attained through this obsession with fun. If you find a man who's obsessed with work, I have things I need to do, and I feel satisfied inside when I do them. I have duty and I have work, and I have obligations to fill and objectives to meet. I feel happy when they are done. That is my fun. My fun is clearing my emails, making $2 million in the day, buying another investment property I don't need, going to bed, training hard, eating right. That's my fun. Call me boring. That's what I enjoy. When you were talking about that lifestyle and what you end up searching for in that hedonism, you just end up searching for excesses, right? To have more fun, you want to get more drunk, go to more clubs, or and it's just a black hole and it never ends and you end up destroying yourself. Yep. We need discipline, we need purpose, we need to have parameters set for us. And, and truthfully, as a person, you're happier that way. That's why I quit drinking. People think I quit drinking because I reverted to Islam. That's not why. I actually quit drinking two months before that. I was extremely effective on alcohol. I was, I, I would drink four or five times a week because I'm extremely rich and I have a very good life and I'm in my mansion and I'm drinking. I was still world famous. I was still making millions of dollars. I was still in fantastic physical condition. All the videos you watched me from a year and a half ago, I still look like a bodybuilder. I still outperformed everybody. I didn't have a drink problem. I could easily quit. In fact, I didn't even want to drink most of the time. It's just a party going on. I was still monumentally successful on alcohol and I could continue to drink alcohol for the rest of my life. But I stopped because I thought, Will I enjoy having less fun? Will it be fun to have less fun? Okay, that's all fun. But would it be fun to have less fun? And I said, maybe instead of spending all of our money doing this stuff, we should spend all of our money getting very regimented. We should have loads of members of staff. And we should be up at exactly 7.46. And we should have a coffee ready and hot at 7.47. And at 8.01, we should go into the gym. And we should finish at 8.27. And we should have all of it. We should have everything regimented. And we should produce more content than ever before. And become richer than ever before. But just remove the fun and have fun in not having fun. And just being monumentally competent and effective. Okay, well, I'll try it. Let me try for six months to give up all fun and just be boring. And then I learned some very interesting things during that time. Firstly, I learned that the whole idea of drinking for being social is now gone. I think I, we're at the age where if you were 21 and you didn't drink, you didn't have a life. There's no reason to drink for socializing because everything's online anyway. You meet everybody on apps. Nobody cares about drinking anymore. That's the first thing I learned. The second thing I learned is that being exceptionally regimented is fun. I truly enjoy it. I enjoy it just as much as I enjoyed being. I mean, because what would happen before is I'd do all my work and I'd train hard and I was always an effective person. I was still a thousand times more effective than the average man. And then I would take six or seven hours and drink and smoke and have fun and enjoy all my the fruits of my labor. I became extremely rich. Why not get on a private jet and have fun? But now, instead of spending those six hours having fun, I spend those six hours continuing to work. And I enjoy it just as much. So now I'm sitting there going, well, I enjoy it just as much, and I'm not damaging my health. I enjoy it just as much, and I'm making more money. So it really, truly ruins my day when a beautiful girl's like, can I see you? It's like, oh, I've got things, <laughs> I've got work to do. I'm regimented. I have to sit here and type. I don't want to talk to you and have fun and party. I don't want to do any of that. I want to do emails. You don't get it. I know to you it makes no sense, yep, yep, but you yep. already have all this money. Why do you want to do emails? Because that's my fun now, regimen. So I decided to dedicate six months to being boring. And by the end of the six months, I was having so much fun being boring that now I will probably never drink again. I am 0% tempted to drink ever again. I'm 0% tempted by fun, which is what you said. And I completely get it. When someone goes, we're going to go here and it's going to be fun. I'm like, no, nah, you have fun. I'll do my emails. You enjoy. I don't want to go to clubs. I don't want to go to some party. I'm not interested in traveling. I'm not interested in seeing anything. I've seen it all anyway. I've been everywhere. Like, who cares? I'm above it all. I'm over it all. I, I want to run my empire. And I want to spend time with people I love. And I want to beat my brother Uno. And that's it. I don't want to do anything. Maybe I've gotten boring. Maybe I've leaned too much into the boring character, but I truly enjoy just being boring and regimented. And I like getting as much work done as possible. And, and that's why I'll never, ever drink again. So the whole concept of fun is alien to me. I totally get it now. When you said that, you're, yeah. you're totally right. It's, it's fun isn't fun. And then achieving things in work is fun. The only, the only thing I guess I can say I do for fun is driving fast cars, but then I need to make $800,000 to buy a Ferrari. So it's, st it's still work involved, you know? There's still work involved. But I really believe God's given me one of the best lives, and I can't complain about anything bad that's happened. It's all been fantastic.
I'm, I'm truly thankful for all. I think if a couple bad things happen to you, you should be intelligent enough to realize that eventually you're going to go over it and you're going to learn an important lesson that's going to change you in the correct direction. And Allah is the best of planners and he knows what you need to learn. I think that as humans, especially as men, we only learn the hard way anyway. There's two ways to learn a lesson, the hard way and the hardest way. There's no easy way to learn a lesson. You have to learn the hard way. So God gives us lessons via difficulty. He thinks you need to learn this about yourself or this about other people. So I'm going to give you a difficult time so you can learn your lesson. Because if I told you, if I just said, hey, Andrew, this is how the world works. You go, yeah, yeah. But when I show you, when you feel it, my fight coach used to say, you have to feel it to believe it. That's why he, if he, he was teaching low kicks, he'd, he'd kick your leg off. Because you don't believe in the power of a low kick. You don't believe a low kick can be so devastating unless you've felt it. You have to feel it to believe it. So God will give you a difficult time so you learn your lessons. And the lessons are very important for you to be the person who you need to be in this life. He's the best of planners. And I'm thankful for all the lessons he's given me. He's bestowed knowledge upon me. I would be, how could I not be grateful to God for making me so intelligent and wise and the ability to look into things so deeply and come up to the right decision and basically predict the future perfectly. You have to have difficulty happening to you all the time. So when you sit and say, I want an easy life, what you're saying is you, you're a dummy and you want to be a dummy. You want to stay a dummy. I want an easy life and I don't want anything bad to happen to me because even though it will teach me lessons, I'm too big of a, I can't handle the emotional pain. I can't handle the stress. I don't want to be a dummy. I want to be smart. If I want to be smart, then hurt me. I just know that I become a more formidable, more competitive version of myself after every single bad thing that's ever happened to me. It's one less thing to fear. It's one less thing to be worried about. I've done it before. Because it's also very interesting because you talk about wisdom, you use the word wisdom, and I appreciate the compliment. I don't read books. I never read a book because I don't have time. All of the wisdom I have, all of this knowledge I speak, all of these things I say have been learned through basically difficulty of life, through professional fighting and being poor and, and all bad things happening to me and struggle. All of my lessons have been bad things, bad things, bad events, bad scenarios, bad situations, pain, suffering, anger, resentment. All of these horrible emotions are how I've learned everything. So I thank God for giving them to me. And anyone who wants an easy life wants to stay a dummy. What do you learn if you just get money, you, you buy a crypto coin, it blows up, you get some money, you go to some restaurants. What do you learn about anything you don't completely? And then the thing is so interesting is that the people who are choosing the safe option is actually choosing the most risky option. So you're not taking a safe option. You're taking a coward's way out and it leads to exactly where a coward's way should lead. Cowards in the end do not get to enjoy the shade of the olive tree because unless you fought in the arena, unless you've been a gladiator, you never get the peace of mind and peace of heart, which is afforded from bravery. So if you choose the safe choices in life, thinking, oh, I'm gonna take the safe route, you don't end up anywhere safe. The safe option doesn't work anymore. You need to take risks. You need to try and start your own business. You need to go all in on things. You need to go wild. You need to be a man who's not afraid to stand up and think, fuck it, it's all on my back and I'm gonna find a way to pull this off. Because any other way, any other option in the world today only leads to a bad scenario. Yeah. The safest thing you can do are the riskiest things. That's, that's the now scenario we're in. Every single gamble I've taken, which was seen as risky, all paid off for me because I dedicated myself completely. So how do you find happiness? Happiness is in struggle. The struggle and the size of the struggle you're facing, along with how important it is and how important you feel it is deep in your heart, is directly correlated to how successful and how happy you're going to feel all of the time. Struggle is extremely important for a man. You should be looking to inject struggle into your life permanently. We talked about this in the past emergency meeting because if you're injecting struggle and that struggle Solving those problems lead to a positive place. Once you become addicted to it, you're going to become a machine of monumental achievement. There are some very simple basic things you can do. Weight training, chess, having debates, trying your very best to take care of your mother, retire her. Make sure that your people who you love are taken care of. You need goals and resistance and something to fight against to live well. Because the distance between pain and joy is what we experience. If you only have joy all of the time and no pain, you are not going to be happy. You don't need drugs, you don't need alcohol, you don't need parties or festivals, you don't need fun. Fun is the vector from which Satan operates. Every time you look at something which is fun, 
It's all just hedonistic. There's no money to be made. You don't retire your mother. You don't help the world. You don't give to charity. You don't become stronger. You don't become wiser. You don't learn anything. Next time you think of what is fun, and someone goes, guys, come, it'll be fun. Sit there and go, wait, 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 wait. Will it? Experiences are unique. Jail was a unique experience. Bunch of fun. Unique. Life's not about fun as a man. Life is about doing the right thing because it must be done. Now, there are some things that are fun which can be earned. And there are some things which are fun that you could do which perhaps involve skill. Driving a supercar around a racetrack is fun. It involves skill. You have to be good at what you do. Cool. But a lot of this fun that is easily accessible to everyone because not everybody can get a Ferrari on a closed racetrack. I can. You can't because you're poor. You do not need fun until you've already reached the highest possible echelon. So this whole idea that you need fun in your life, you don't. What you need is purpose. You need discipline. You need hard work. You need things to do which are going to benefit you and the others around you. You need duty. You need obligations. And you need performance metrics. You need people around you who are going to hold you accountable. You don't need to be waking up thinking about fun. You're nobodies. You're not important. Nobody knows who you are. You're not physically strong. You're not financially wealthy. You have bigger concerns. You're obsessed with this idea of fun. Hey, what are we going to do this weekend? We need to have some fun. Do you? Do you need fun? Do you deserve it? Really? Have you actually gone out there in the universe and made a mark large enough that you're allowed some time off to have some fun? You don't deserve any fun. You don't need any fun. You have work to do. Your obsession with fun is holding you back. These things you think are fun aren't fun. Checking your bank balance at, in your house, not going out, you're not in the club, and seeing $20 million liquid is very fun. That's right. Much more fun than anything you could possibly ever do. So, although it wasn't fun to sit around and accumulate that kind of wealth, it's the funnest thing in the universe, in a way. For a man, your contentment will come from your purpose, and it will come from your competence, and it will come from succeeding objectives. It will come from completing difficult things that other people cannot complete. It will never come from the easily accessible hedonism, which you have confused for fun. If everybody can do it, you shouldn't want to do it. If everybody can go to that concert, you shouldn't want to go. If everybody can go to that club, you shouldn't want to go. You should only want to do things others can't do. The only fun I have is doing things I know you're not allowed to do. Putting my Bugatti on an A380 and flying it around the world to a racetrack, which I've rented out for only me and only my friends to race around cars. You can't do that. I can. That is fun. But if you say to me, Andrew, come to this party, and I say, well, who's there? Everyone. Oh, everyone's there. Does that mean I need to go, right? It's the, it's the event of the century. Ooh, everyone's there. If everyone's there, it's trash. So you need to sit there and go, all right, I'm being asked to do something fun. Who else can do this? And if it, the answer is everybody, stop. I clear my emails. I've trained hard that day. I've made a couple million dollars. I've specced a brand new car. I've checked on all the people I love, all the people I care about. I've donated some money to charity. My children are fed. Their mothers are taken care of. Everything is in order. Everything is in its proper place. That is fun. If you say to me, Andrew, skip a portion of that, skip a portion of that organization and professionalism so that we can go and do something that everyone else can do, my answer will be no. That does not sound fun to me. And the fact that you think that's fun shows that you have a severe mental deficiency. Stay away from it. You're only going to find actual fun through purpose. You're only going to find purpose through exceptionalism. So you need to become the best possible version of yourself in all realms. That's extremely important. The reason you are so unhappy is because you are trying to have fun. You're unhappy because you're trying to have fun instead of trying to become important. They are very different things and you're never going to feel satisfied in your heart unless you become important. Please imagine. And being important is fun. Oh, it's absolutely fun. Please imagine, and I don't state this with arrogance. Please imagine for a second you're the most Googled man on the planet. And you're a kickboxing world champion and you have hundreds of millions of dollars and you're built like a tank. Imagine how you feel when you look in the mirror. Nothing can match that. Nothing can beat that. As a man, you need to have struggle in your life. And I want you guys to actually sit and think, what struggle are you going through daily? What struggle are you undertaking? What struggle are you trying to overcome? Because you should make a list of them. I can know for myself every single day I wake up and I train physically. Every single day I have to go through X amount of physical pain. When my day begins, that is a struggle that must be completed. That I must try and keep my massive empire online, see my children, take care of everybody. There's struggle involved. My life is difficult. Difficult lives are fulfilling because we used to have to hunt and fish and go out there and go through difficulty to survive. And I often see that when I speak to people who are too comfortable, they end up being unhappy. Yeah. You can't entertain yourself to happiness. You must earn happiness. You must climb a mountain. You must struggle yourself to happiness. That's extremely important. There must be physical, mental, social, creative, some kind of spiritual struggle. 
And those things being satisfied is what's going to satisfy you. It's like Bitcoin. Bitcoin's a mathematical equation. You solve the equation, you get a Bitcoin. Life is very much the same. There's struggles, there's difficulties which you have undertaken, which you have adopted to try and complete. And when you finish those things, then you get satisfaction as a reward. That's the Bitcoin. The only other alternative to that to feel good is hedonism, which is drugs and alcohol. And that's not going to satisfy you for very long. It's also going to destroy your life. So it's extremely important. This is actually why people are addicted to video games. Young men are addicted to video games because it mimics virtually what they ought to be doing in the real world. Yeah. Effort in to upgrade their character to become a better version of themselves so they can do better things than they could previously do and explore new areas of the map. The areas of the map, which are Bugatti Convention, flying there on a private jet to sit with billionaires. The Grand but, Casino Monaco is a cool area of the map that you have, you have not unlocked yet, but it's great. Which requires you to upgrade your character as a person. You understand this in video games, and you do it in video games because it's very interesting to do. However, you don't want to do it in the real world. But in the real world, it's so much more rewarding. And I'm actually going to argue that we're living in one of the pe final periods where that's true. I'd say in a few generations, who you are and who your physical body is may not matter nearly as much. No, but it does matter today. A it, lot. Exactly. So that's why you should enjoy it while you can. Yeah. So you need to... Pick the low-hanging fruit first, and the starting block to all of these things is your body. I believe if you lift, stretch, move, improve your body, try and train MMA, learn how to fight, get stronger, get bigger muscles, it's a fast track to self-discipline which will carry over into all other endeavors. And I would argue that is nearly impossible. In fact, how many people can say the gym saved their life? How many people do you know were depressed, started training, got in fantastic shape and weren't depressed anymore? It is very easy. The low-hanging fruit is your body and upgrading your body. That is the easiest struggle, which is never going to backfire on you and never going to be a negative towards any other facet of your life. And when I look at men who are physical specimens, I think everyone naturally does this, but I'm going to openly say it. I respect them differently than I look at men who aren't. I have a different level of respect for them because they show me they have discipline. They show me they have motivation. They show me they're capable of doing difficult and hard things. Those are the kind of people I trust. They're not afraid of struggle. They're problem solvers. People who train are problem solvers and you need to become one and you need to become very, very adept at solving problems pretty quickly. I actually find it amazing that there's people out there who aren't in perfect physical condition. Guys, let me tell you all a, a newsflash. It's if you hard. eat right and you train hard, you look good. Yeah. It's like a biological certainty. It's almost impossible to be fat and look bad if you eat right and train hard. Your body will react and give you exactly what you want. So why don't you all look like superheroes? Do you not understand how intimidating that is just when they look at a group of people and they all look like superheroes and they can tell they're all disciplined, all hardworking, all dedicated, all physically strong? The struggle is what's beautiful about it. That's the most important thing. That's what you have to understand. Yeah, because no matter how rich you are, no matter how smart you are, no matter what family you're born into, you can only get into shape the same way as everybody else. So you could be Mark Zuckerberg, who's now in shape and he's a billionaire, but you can't say, oh, he bought it. He didn't buy it. He's just in great shape because he earned it like everyone else. You'd be flat broke or rich as fuck. If you're in good shape, you had to earn it. It's as simple as that. So yeah, it says a lot about who you are as a person. First, you want to become as strong as physically possible. So you want to be as strong as physically possible. Next, you want to try and make as much money as possible. Not even necessarily for the money, although money is extremely important because it allows you to take care of yourself. We've talked about this before, but there's a challenge involved. And solving that challenge is going to make you feel more satisfied as a human. Happiness comes from success and making money is success. You should try and make people around you smile and be happy. You should try and encourage positivity around you. You should be the kind of person that no one can really complain about their struggles around because they know that you're the person who's going to be like, why are you complaining when you could just simply fix it? Especially successful people. Successful people are uninterested in stealing because we'd rather everybody win and keep the friendship and keep the network and keep the positive orgones and keep the good karma than make a little bit extra money. So it's amazing what you see in the world. And if you become a person who is happy and successful and can take care of himself and adopt struggles, you're going to start finding those other people who do the same thing and then you're going to build a network and become fantastic. Live with men you're in competition with. So, you and your friends need to have friendly competition at all times. Now, you need to meet your friends and you need to have banter and competition around things that matter. Who's got the most money? Who's worked hardest? Who's discovered XYZ? Crypto? Stock? New way of generating income? Who's trained that day? Who has the most children? Put some actual competitions together that matter and start competing and being around people because you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. Everybody knows this. So why don't you get some genuine metrics that will improve your life? 
You won't have time to stand around cooking meals if you're friends with somebody who works out for three hours a day, for example, because you're going to need to find three hours a day to train to beat him, which means you're going to have to just eat that rotisserie chicken as you do squats like a man should. Live with men you're in competition with. This is ultra important because you can measure yourself against your circle. If Tristan comes downstairs and says, I've done a thousand push-ups, I will do anything it takes to do a thousand and one just to annoy him because I know that he then has to do a thousand and two and pissing him off is worth it. It's always worth it. And that's why you need to have that kind of competition. Get your act together, get some genuine metrics, things that matter. And once they're all put together, you're going to let, live in a naturally competitive environment, which is going to increase your testosterone level. It's going to prevent you from doing a lot of dumb shit. And the competition one's great, you know, because you can apply it to everything. There are a lot of people who are going to get, you know, kicked in the nuts and, and take a fall and they're going to let it beat them down. You know, Andrew's lost very important kickboxing matches. Did he mm. quit fighting then? Did I quit fighting when I got my ass kicked a couple times? No, you don't. You just have to continue because in life, there are only winners and losers. There are no participation trophies. There's no, you know, stickers and everyone's invited to have a good time. You know, life is hard and everyone in life is actually trying to play the same game. If you're a sportsman, there's a small pool of people who compete at kickboxing, professional soccer, and the bigger the pool is, the more difficult it is. Well, life is the only game where every single one of us, 8.1 billion people, is trying to play the exact same game. And the same game is, there's only so much money in the world, there's only so many resources, there's only so much happiness, I'm going to try to provide for my family as best as I can. And whether people say money's not important or is important, everyone's part of this game. So winning is very difficult. And you have to keep trying when you get when you get kicked and you fall down. And that's the advice I give to every every young man who listens to me. People are afraid of accepting there's a problem because then they know they have a responsibility yeah, towards then you fixing gotta, yeah. it. And they don't want to do anything, one, because they're lazy, and two, because they're afraid they might lose. So they'd rather pretend there's no problem at all. And I think I often say to people in a lot of my videos about a lot of other subjects that it's not always the winning and the losing. It's it's the fighting in the first place. And there's plenty of men in history you remember who ended up losing in the end. Napoleon, for example, who still fought, which is why they mattered. It's not, if you're only going to fight when you're guaranteed to win, then no bravery is required. And you have to fight so that you can look back on your life and feel happy that you tried to do something when you knew it was going on before it was too late. Forget about the winning and losing for now. Focus on the fight. You must wait for the moment when the opponent's mind is scattered and strike without hesitation. If you do not overcome your tendency to give up so easily, your life will lead to nothing. Objectify your demons so you control them instead of them controlling you. Fear is a reaction. Courage is a decision. You have to train your mind to be stronger than your emotions, especially your impulses, or else you're going to lose yourself. You will only be found by the devil once you are lost, and he will lead you to hell. Most of the important things in the world have been accomplished by men who kept fighting when there seemed to be no hope at all. I think it's a good motto, perhaps, for life, for everyone who's watching this. I heard it during a boxing match, and I think it was between Evander Holyfield against some guy who's not nearly as well known. And Holyfield was losing, and then he starts swinging and hitting the guy. And the commentator said, suddenly the champion returns with initiative and vengeance. That's a good slogan for life. You should wake up, look in the mirror and say, suddenly, the champion returns with initiative and vengeance. That's a good way to start your day every single day. Yeah, it is. Initiative and vengeance to become the best possible version of yourself. It's very important. And this is the last piece of advice I want to give to people at home. A lot of people go through life with a very average attitude and they wait for their one big break. But you have to build your big break. And you're going to do that with a thousand tiny victories. If you're watching this, ask yourself a question. When's the last time you genuinely tested yourself? When's the last time you genuinely felt challenged? Win or lose, you can be a hero if you just fight. Win or lose, you can be a hero if you make the brave decision. There are so many men of history we remember who didn't even win every time. Napoleon lost. He's still famous. His name's still etched into history. You can't escape.